The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on the 21st day of September. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, noon till 1 p.m. at 877-927-6648. Dow uh, makes another new high today. Uh, and this is very interesting. The high that was made at 26763, mm, right there. Uh, that was this morning by 1130. I uh, went to that missing leg D that for subscribers I'm opening call. We were looking at a G slash C in the Chapman Wave methodology. Remember, we like to go to at least the fourth highest peak. The last one at 26,211 was also Chapman Wave 5 at peak D, and then it pulled back to the 26,030 level. Started this brand new move to the upside. The speed with which the markets are breaking to the upside, that's one of the difficulties that if you don't get that exact low, and just hop on and say, take me wherever you want to take me. It's very difficult after that because you're buying gaps to the upside, which are usually not preferable. In this case, probably would have been preferable. Now, we're looking at uh, the chance that there could be a little bit of a pullback here. And one of the reasons normally at DOE in the daily chart of the Dow, and in the daily Dow, you can see right here, we've gone to leg D, extended it uh, from the 26th. 697 high yesterday to today's high of 26763. Um, also, leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology and Chapman Wave uh, 5 in the 120 minute chart. But at the same time, I'm not getting signals yet to say that normally we'd be looking to short right here. Anytime you get to a D or an E, this is kind of where we want to at least consider going short even if it's for a short-term pullback. And in fact, we've hit a lot of the pullbacks over the last year, except they've only been very brief. And then they turn around and go to new highs. But timing for the for the downside, this is where normally I would do it, is extended in most um, technical aspects. But you can remain, look at 95% in the stochastic and flat in the 120 minute chart. It can remain like that. And the daily went from way, way, uh, way down at the... Uh, 50% level, and then suddenly it took off, and now it's trading at 90%. So that so far is a big positive. And you can see it here, and I think I've got it, yeah, in the um, E-mini, just trying to break out above 29.43.50. Um, if it does that, oh, God, it's just done it as we speak. Go to leg C in the five-minute chart, and uh, leg B in the gray leg B, that is, in a 10-minute chart. So the key support now is at 29 between 29.41 and 29.39 uh, for the next couple of hours. All right, let's get back to our story. So Dow is at all-time highs. SPX.X, the S&P, um, went to a new all-time high yesterday. It was lagging, lagging, and power powers through the uh, 29.16.50 level, and it went straight to the 20, and then 29.16.50 was the previous high, and it's gone, yep, that, that on the 29th of August. And now it's in leg, I'm calling it for now leg E to the upside, but it has broken positively in the bank D and stochastics at 84%. I'm calling this a G slash C in the weekly chart. It's another reason why I'm not sure yet how we will play the short side, because if that's the case, in September, probably maybe even to the first week of uh, October, we could be recycling higher. So this breakout was really important. Support now is in the, at 29.38 right now. Key support will be 29.12 29, to 29.08. Let's go to the QQQ, one, two, three. The QQQ series, the investing, you have to get used to saying that. Invesco QQ Trust series. Um, nothing to see here, folks. Just up 11 cents. 0.07 at 184.86, still quite a bit under the 187.52. Of course, the way speed works with these things, you can suddenly see a breakout. And the weekly chart, I'm calling this a leg E for now, and monthly chart leg E. 120-minute chart has just gone to a peak C, so there could be another little pop to the upside. But so far, it is lagging like the IWM, which was lagging earlier. Um, then it suddenly had a very nice intraday move early this morning.
and it runs to the 170, 182 level. But wait a minute, 180, the high was 173.39 on the 31st of August when it made the peak F top of the daily. It is pulling back. So when I talk about a, a rotational market, this is an absolute perfect. I mean, yesterday I was talking with Ben because the S&P and the Dow are holding pretty well. The NASDAQ, the IWM, and let me see with the New York Stock Exchange. That should be doing okay this morning. Um, yeah, it's up 35. It's in leg C in the daily chart. That should still go to a D. I'm calling this an F for now in the weekly chart. It is starting. You see, I picked this up some time ago, but I had just a little too much disbelief. And one of the things is I was anticipating that the Dow, that because the other indices made that sharp uh, January high and then that very sharp February uh, ran up into, that was in this case right here, the January 26, yeah, January 26 high in the New York Stock Exchange, and then plummets down to, in two weeks, it goes down to, uh, from the 13,600s, goes down to the 12,000, uh, to the 12,000 level. My thinking was that, it would struggle to get back up, and that you, you would see a lot of problems because the rule of thumb for me with a rectangle formation is that there could be an inside buy mode if certain conditions are, are met. And if that's the case, you can have in a shorter time frame, in this case, we'd be looking at the monthly. So in the weekly time frame, you should get to a D, and D is going to tell you whether it's gone just under, exactly on, or just above the previous all-time high. That was January 26 high. And then one by one, the IW1 powered through it. Then the um, then the Qs powered through. Then the S&P. So it seemed to be obvious that I should have just switched from short to long to say the Dow's turn is coming. And once it breaks at 26,616, you can actually last a little longer if you're going to have to wait for the New York Stock Exchange to go all the way from now 13,260 to its all-time high of 13,635. That can take a couple of weeks. So this weekend is going to be a lot of stuff to be looking at because we absolutely have a diverse market. I mean, Amazon, Amazon, the big, big leader, is down 10 again today. It's just been stalling since it made its high back on the 4th of September. So that's with the indices. And the IYC, which has Amazon as a, a key component, is trading up 62 cents. It has managed, even without Amazon, to squeak to another high. I'm not sure if I can count this as an F. I'll call it an F for now, maybe an F slash B in the daily, but it's an E in the weekly and an E in the monthly. So, um, that's what I mean by rotation. Amazon, which was the heaviest participant and really helping the IYC, which is the United States Consumer Services ETF, now is maybe stalling at a tad, but it's still making all-time highs. So that is that is strength within that sector. Let's go to gold. Gold was down sharply earlier. Now it's down 9 at uh, 12.02. Um, it's kind of stalled. Look at this lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m in the daily, the weekly chart. This is the week that I said if it's going to power through the 9 period moving average to 1214 and then 1229 the period moving average. This should be a little happen to the dollar. The dollar hit the 200 period extension moving average perfectly in leg D and he's actually lagging a little bit. So this is a very important moment for the currencies and for the dollar operation. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked, money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. While I'm doing this, something was mentioned in the den. I'm going to do this live because it's technical. I always like to do something technical in the Chapman Wave methodology that uh, is a little unusual from, from the usual uh, uh, technical analysis that we do. In the Chapman Wave methodology, rarely in a monthly chart will I use something called the phantom peak. That's where the, the highs for two bars are exactly the same or within like a cent or two. doesn't matter what the price is. It's got to be really close. It's almost as if it should have made a peak because the technicals in a, in a short time frame actually dip with the price itself, held steady. And in this particular instance, I'm looking at this chart. It's CGNX Cognex Core. Trading at 57.72, up 86. Beautiful daily chart. Weekly chart is in leg C. Technicals are very strong, but it was the monthly. And I'm, I believe I'm correct. Yeah, I'm taking the low because that's in the chapter wave. What you do is try to find the obvious low bar low from which to gauge uh, and to start a rising series of highs, high, higher peaks that you can label. And the low of 1401 back in January of 2016, I'm calling that the low. Then it goes to peak A. At, on, in March of 2016 at 20.79. And then it has, in June, it has 22.62 as the high, 22.68 as the next high. So that really shouldn't be counted. But on the, in August to September, it has 26.73 as a high, and then 26.73. So what I normally do is I don't do anything at that particular moment because it's still rising. But as I get to like a peak C and then it's still, and that would normally be a peak B, right? And then I get to a high that looks to me like the MACD's uh, good, but the stochastic stalling badly, unbalanced volume stalling. I remember doing this a while ago. I don't have that particular chart for some reason with a notation, but now I've, I redid it quickly and I chose immediately. I wasn't even looking to do the count. I just looked at this and I, I said, hey, I bet that's a phantom peak. Because what happens with the phantom peak, if you're wrong, yep, it will still go a little higher and eventually get to that D, but at least you were forewarned that, you know, other things can happen. So I make that a red B, blue um, capital letters on the way up. In this case, I make it a, a red B, and then it goes to a perfect C, and then it goes to a D, November of 2017 at 72.99, and then plunges down to 40. So it gets cut, nine and a half, cuts cut about 40, 40%. 40 
And now it's rallying a little bit, and it's in a gray leg. Big Why gray? Because it's way underneath the previous high, and the MACD hasn't turned around yet. Stochastic has. So there's a, so far a counter trend bounce. So that helped. And that happens once in a while, a little bit more in daily charts. I say a little bit, very rare, but a little bit more. And occasionally in a weekly, but very, very seldom in a monthly. But the times I have used it, it's been really important. And it's just to be more conservative and to be ready. So now let me just get back here. I want you to show you silver. Uh, silver, how silver is up 0.08. It's gone to a leg B, and that's starting to show signs of a divergence. Wow, how many times in each sector do we have stocks that show a divergence when the trend in the larger scheme of things is really a mixed picture? So this is going to be very important. This is a big positive because the MACD is good. Stochastic's running nicely under the pressure of gold being down. That could be single use, use selling. In other words, this is a particular a motivation for someone to really pile in and press uh, gold down. But if I'm looking at this, I'm saying, wait a minute, let's do the silvers, okay? Let's look at the euro, EURUSD. Hey, that's gone to a leg D. Wait a minute, a leg D in the daily? And the MACD is good. Stochastics way under the previous peak B high. That was on the 28th of August at 1.173. We're trading out 1.174, having hit today 1.1803. <clears throat> MACD's good. There's a divergence I've got to follow. And not only that, the 200-period the moving average in the weekly is the stalling factor. It went above it hmm, for two intra-week intra days, and now it's back right on the line. And that monthly chart, yeah, it's a little bit better, but it's not great. So that's the euro. And now let's look at the USDJPY, which is the yen. This is the US dollar, Japanese yen currency. Pit. Hey, wait a minute. This is also in leg D. I still think from the cup formation that we've seen so many times that actually takes out the left side high, that the euro, that the yen at 112.62 up 13 cents is going to take out 113.21, the left side high that was made on the week of the 20th of July. Um, it's working its way there, and that's going to help the long-term downtrend line in the monthly chart. But it is a leg D, and MACD is good, a little overextended, but good. Stochastic is very good at 93. It is stronger than the uh, euro. Now, this is going to be very important. The, the, um, the pattern that we're looking at, you see this D right here? Look at the TBT which is the inverse of the TLT. Three days ago, it made a leg E at 39.07. Um, on the 19th, had an in, uh, a pullback yesterday with a slightly lower low, filled in the gap, and today has another inside day. This is an inside day. At 38.54, it's made a peak E. The MACD is strong. Stochastic is still good at 88%, but it is turning down. On balance volume is turning down. Relative strength is still good. Why did I say let's look at this? Because let me just move this over here. You see the, the breakout, Chapman Wave Cup and Ladle breakout? That's different when you go straight through the left side high. You don't stop and make a little cup and handle formation. You just power right through. Then what it says is you should go to at least a D. If you're already in D, you should go to at least an E. If you have made a D and this is a spike to the upside, this could sort of brand your leg A, but we've got to think of it as E, and it makes the left side high. And this is that peak G high on the uh, one, on the 1st of August at 37.91, that's your key support on any pullback. That's the TBT. But wait a minute, if you go to the T and X, T and X is in leg, the, was in leg E, and today it looks like a peak E, but it's the FVX that has really been the leader of the yields, the five year, that is only at peak C, and looks to me like you can have, it doesn't have to. This could turn out to be an alternate count, F slash C. I think it's a C, and I think there'll be one little quick pop to 29.78 or higher, and that will make leg D, and then we'll see what happens. Why? Because the weekly chart is really broken out. I, I've tried a number of ways. The way I see it, this is, this is probably a leg C. There's no other way I can count it, and the weekly MACD is just about a cross positive, and the monthly is in leg D. I have to tell you, I spoke to someone who's probably one of the one of the, uh, I, don't know, I don't even know what to call him. Um, he, he and his partner are probably the 
top Bond people or noted Bond people, um, especially the partner um, in the country. And we were talking about bonds, and um, I said, yeah, it looks to me like yields are kind of breaking out. And he said, yeah, I think I think we're going to go higher. Fed is caught between a rock and a hard place. Of course, we all knew that. Um, but this is very interesting because um, any way you look at it, this breakout in yields should be a very good thing for the economy. It's saying, hey, this is normalization of the yields because there should be some demand for yields as businesses want to expand. That's kind of what you expect. So not a bad thing, but it's it, it could start to impact uh, uh, both rates and inflation a lot quicker than people think. All right, I'll be back. Dow's up 86, S&P's up 5, and we'll talk about a couple other things. A lot of questions came in. Yes, Boeing, almost at an all-time high. I'll be back. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics, including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan's Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Monday, September 24th, TFNN is launching a new updated version of our website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, and starting Monday, you'll be able to experience the new and improved TFNN website. If you're a current subscriber, don't worry, your subscription will be automatically transferred. The new TFNN.com will allow much easier access to all your account and subscription information. Get ready for the new TFNN.com educating investors this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com hi folks yeah don't forget monday uh, starts actually i think it's starting this evening but uh, it will be the, the switch over to the new uh, face of tfnn so uh, just have a little patience i'm sure everything will work out just fine uh, today's technology is one of those things where it's just a miracle as it works, but one little dot in the wrong place, and you never know. So uh, just have patience. I'm sure it's going to be just great. Within a few days, everything should be just perfect. So, AW, what was the question I had? The question is from Paul. 
Paul says, good day to you, sir. Good day, Paul. Uh, it was great hearing you on Financial Sense News Hour a few weeks back. Can you please give me your technical breakdown on AWSM? It, it, it was a great day trading stock the past few days. Is this just a pop and drop or is this something else? Uh, now I should AWSM. AWSM is Cool Holdings, Inc. It looks to me like it is in the... Um, I'm not sure medical marijuana or whatever it is. It's a weed stock. That's the pattern it looks like. Maybe someone in the den can help me. AWSM. Um, oh, um, so let me do this. A uh, couple of questions going on at the same time. It's trading at 22. Uh, yesterday it closed at just over 10 at about 11. So it's almost doubled in a day. It's up 91%. So here's my thing, Paul. Uh, these, these are not flurries to the upside. These are moves that people are making a lot of money on, except when it does what the stock that was a T, uh, L, T, R, Y. No. Uh, <laughs> am I ever going to remember that? Uh, T, L, R, Y. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Tol Ray, medical cannabis. So it, it runs up to 300, exact round number. Whoever bought it at three, obviously someone sold it, but whoever bought it at 300 is looking at not just a small loss, not just a big loss, but a massive loss. Cut in, look, 300 to trading right now at 134. It did hit 123. That's almost 200, that's almost two-thirds of your, let's just be uh, a little bit sensible here. Let's talk about uh, at least 55 to 63% loss. Um, so you've got to be really careful. They're not all doing that. This one was just a little nuts. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to say to you, if you've been trading it, keep it on your list, AWSM. Keep it on your list as a, uh, a some kind of a, a trading stock. At some point, you're going to be wrong, so don't don't think each time you make money, you're going to you're going to go bigger and bigger and bigger. It's the exact opposite of a stock like this. Use more risk money and less capital on each of these big moves to the upside, so that yes, it looks fantastic. You put your life savings in, in and it goes from six dollars three days ago to twenty two dollars this morning. Fantastic. Uh, but if you're the one that is in the reverse, by the end of the day, it suddenly gives everything back. Don't do that. Right now, if you have a smaller position and it does fantastically, just be real happy you found yourself a trading stock that does it. It's not going to last for much longer. It'll have another season later on. But at some point, these things are going to get clobbered and then they'll be out of action, just like a Bitcoin. Who even talks about Bitcoin anymore? Like Bitcoin. You remember in January, I said, bubble, 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 toil and trouble. Um, just for, watch out. I'm hearing people all the time talking about 40, 50,000 in Bitcoin. I doubt whether it's going to see that this year it's going to go much, much lower. So these things are going to get smoked at some point, and they're going to get um, put aside and shunted for a while. But in this moment, take everything you can in terms of focusing on it, but get in, get out, get in, get out. And it would be nice to say, oh, I could have just bought it at six. It's trading at 18 now. It went to 22. It's probably going to go to uh, 40 or 70. This is not the attitude to have right now. So please, Paul, you've done great right now. I'm not saying this has to drop. It's at 1815. Actually, as we're speaking, it's already dropped the point. But I am saying that there's going to be a really fantastic story for this whole group. But right now, it's the most speculative early stage, and you got to be careful. Next question I had was SOX, uh, Intel. Okay, so the SMH is trading right now down 14 sets at 107.53. We did not go short. We did not go long. I'm watching this closely because my bias right now is to go short this SMHs. But that's just the bias. I need a little more proof, and I need a little more conviction that that's that's going to go down to in this triangle formation, wedge formation, flag formation. In the weekly chart with lower highs and higher lows, you can see we're coming into we just about we just touched the Chapman Wave inside track. 
repellent first line, the red one. The green one is the breakout line on the upside. So now we've got to see if it pulls back. And if it does, between 105 and 104 would be a downside target. Then it can have another bounce. So I don't know what the question is. Let me just double check here. Bob wanted to know. Oh, he's just saying, okay. And Intel, see, so MU was after hours up $3 or something. This morning you wake up and it's down MU. Hey, what happened? No historical data. Yep, there it is. Down $1.27. It's in its sell mode in the daily, sell mode in the weekly, sell mode in the monthly. Micron Technologies trading at 44.80, down a dollar 26. Be careful. I think that there's, it's very select. Next question I had was Intel. Uh, Intel is same thing. Peak G in the weekly, peak E in the. The semiconductors are in a hat trick top. You got to be very careful. That means that they're going to take a long time to reconstitute and make a base. That's really worth trading to the upside. I think they will, but it's going to take quite a while to do that. Uh, Julie, you want to know S&P, what's the question? Up for the ninth time in 10 sessions, exhaustion move. You know, I tend to look at these and I say, let me just look at the pattern. Um, it's in, I'm calling this an E, it could turn out to be E slash C. Uh, MACD did cross positive. It's way under the previous peak of 29.16.50 on the 29th in the MACD. And the stochastic's also way underneath it, but it's 83% and running. So far, this is good. I'm thinking next week I will start implementing some shorts, and there will just be trading shorts because those weekly charts are still strong. But if I get sell signals, I got people who like to day trade or at least trade a swing trade. And that might be the play. I'm not doing it just yet. But yes, you're, you're right. No, I wouldn't call it an exhaustion move. I don't have that in the technicals. I do have it in price. And pr the technicals are, might be a good harbinger of some support between 29.10 and 29.00 over the next week and a half. Uh, next question I had was Boeing, high of the day. Oh, man. Thank goodness we're not trading Boeing. I just talk about it. But Boeing is a 370 up three. Leg C. Still under the all-time high. <clears throat> Forgot to type that in. All-time, this time I will. 374.48, the week of the 8th of June. 378. Did I say what I said? <laughs> 48. The week of, <laughs> that was just two seconds ago. How come you can remember it? I think I said the 18th of June. Oh, man. I always have to go and check to see I got everything right. Um, 374.48. 375. That was a problem. 374.48. Okay, so um, we're at 370, just an eye blink away. Leg C, and the MACD is good, and the stochastic is good. I think it is going to test the 372 uh, to 375 area. It could make a nominal new high. And if it does that, I will have to call this a leg C rather than a leg G in the week, in the month. Um, I'll be right back. Basel Jump, Tiger Conditions are just up 72. SPs only have 3.94, and the Qs are just bare for the Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Yeah, so let me just double check here. Yeah, so it's going to be very important to see how the IAI, iShares Broker Dealer Sector, can handle this particular phase right now. Because new all-time highs, Dow, every, everyone just rotating into new, uh, new all-time high territory. Why is the iShares Broker Dealer and Securities ETF at 65.18 down 26 cents? Uh, why is it not at all-time highs above 70.58? Surely the public is coming in uh, in the ha in the handful, handfuls, hands full, handfuls. Um, but I I don't see that. But at the same time, if the uh, trading at 65.18 right now, if it can hold the 64. 60, 65 to 64.80 area over the next two days, and then spike somehow or other to 65.80, just to the high 65s, to show that it's it's participating in this. I would say that's good action. This is something to keep your eye on. Um, the question I had about the HGX, which I you know we always look at every weekend. I show subscribers, so don't forget for my subscribers. Um, I usually start sending charts out over the weekend. Um, I'll be away tonight and tomorrow, but I will certainly try to get some out first thing in the morning. Uh, but Sunday, I'll start increasing them. This is for Monday's uh, opening call newsletter. I like to start getting things out early. Um, I, I will do something. I'll show the HGX in a little more detail. I usually show it together. This is the, uh, well, I haven't got it here. Together with Wood, which is the iShares Global and Timber and Forestry ETF. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, you know, <laughs> If yields keep going higher, the since the January 26 high, peak G in the weekly chart, peak F in the monthly chart, uh, up at the 364.56 area, we're trading 70 points lower. That's almost 20%, right? Um, that's that's a lot, a percentage to the downside, and there's just been lower lows and lower highs. Now it's for, for the past since June, it's trying to form a base of the 294 area, so 297 right now. It hasn't gone, it hasn't been able to close above the 14 pre moving average more than once since it broke down back in uh, February. Um, this is not good. So I the question is. What about it? Well, if you look at BZH is the question. BZH, look, BZH, Visa Homes. Look at this, and you low. Uh, this is not good. 52-week low, I think. Yeah, I think it's a 52-week low. That is not good. I'm really worried. I'm really worried about um, a real estate here in the Boston area and um, in the New York, I'd say Brooklyn area, which I know a little bit better, and some Manhattan. 
I see prices. I see, uh, yes, some things go just like that, but they aren't fighting for it. And here in the Boston area, things actually sit on the market a little bit. And you're not getting the, the wars that were going on. Uh, you remember I was telling you about uh, people paying over, well over the asking price, skipping, can you believe, skipping the inspection and any other contingency? I mean, in a house, these old houses in the New England area, yeah, they're great and they've lasted this long, but there is always something to do. A roof, you know, you're talking, what, eight to 15,000. If you've got a slate roof, you're talking 150,000. I don't know what's on their mind. Anyway, that's what pressure does. Now they don't have quite as much pressure. I'm watching this closely for real estate. So Home Depot, yeah, good one. Okay, let me just talk about this for a moment. Home Depot is up one. It hasn't gone to that high that it made at 215.43, but it's holding pretty darn well. Now, I have an index that I've developed. I'm working a lot more on it. It's called my cash index. What is it? It's Syntas. It's just four stocks. Like I used to have my Dow index, then we lost GE. So Syntax has made a high. It made a high right here at 217.34 on the 7th of, July, of, of September. It's just, uh, what, a week or two ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. And look at it. It's pulled back, not sharply, but it has pulled back while the down, the S&P, uh, have really climbed higher. It's pulled back from 217 to 210. Uh, big deal, seven points in a $217 stock. Hey, it's the angle, the direction. Look at the technicals, how weak they are. The weekly chart is just as we speak. It is slightly higher in the MACD, but it's turning down real close to turning negative. And 93% in the stochastic is really good. but it's a laggy indicator, and price is going to make the difference, and it's sitting right on the nine-period moving average of the weekly chart. Syntax is overalls, uniforms, rentals. I love to do this and say, hey, let's look at Marriott. Overalls, yeah, right, overalls. Marriott is in a leg E, but way under the 149 high of um, 39th of uh, January. Hmm, I'm not sure if that's correct. On the second, uh, the week of the second, uh, the week of the second of February. <laughs> let me just let me just double check that that was one of the correct prices. Two slash two eighteen. And let me just double check. Yeah, I think it, I think that's correct price. I don't know what I was doing for the uh, one forty nine twenty one. Yep. So that was the high. It was the all time high. There it is. Married International hotels, resorts, etc. A shares. NACD cross negative, but it's it's holding above the fourteen period and the nine period as we speak. But look at that slide from 149 to 119, 20 points. Hey, that's worth 17 or 18 percent. So I, I like to put them together. So that's Syntas. Wait a minute. Amazon, we spoke of just a moment ago. Amazon pulling back. No big deal yet. But the daily chart is saying, gee, it just hasn't been able to garner any upside traction because it keeps making lower lows and lower highs. At 1929, if Amazon takes out 1878 support, in the next week or two, that'll be a big deal. Um, but so far, monthly chart's great. Weekly chart is holding, but MACD is just about, yep, it's just about to cross negative right now. Go to watch this closely. So, and, uh, S is SPY. That's the, uh, the, the deposit receipts for the S&P. Nice all-time high yesterday. Uh, I'm, I'm going to call it E. I should give it an E slash B, but just E for the moment. Um, just watching it, and there's just enough strength to maybe pop a little bit higher. But in the meantime, the weekly chart is good and the monthly chart is good. So you've got one that's pulled back, but still looks good in the intermediate to long term. Another one which has pulled back and still looks great in the um, weekly and monthly. And now you've got one that is outstanding in, in all time frames. Um, a little bit technically weak in the daily, but it's still the price is going high. And Home Depot, that's it, cash, C-A-S-H, at all-time highs uh, just three weeks ago, and now it is two weeks ago, and now it is really just holding up there, but the technicals are starting to weaken in the daily. Monthly, weekly and monthly are still good. Monthly, in fact, I've got his leg C, so it's a little bit of a mixed picture, watching it closely. Next question I had was, where was it? It was over here. Um, yeah, there it is. Uh, could I look at, uh, didn't I just do that? KRE, I said KRE, uh, maybe I typed it into the dead. Yeah, KRE is the regional S&P spider uh, bank e ETF. Um, weekly, 
weekly chart is really starting to weaken. The monthly chart is good, but it's got the rectangle after a peak D, and the technicals are failing. And the daily has gone from the 64s down to the 61s, and now it's actually at 62.32. This is not great action. So I'm watching this closely, same as the XLF. Um, I'll be back. Dows up 75, S&Ps up 4. Dows up Chapman, time get conditions out. One segment to go. And then, of course, we've got the weekend of transition to TFNN. Should work out fine. Remember, just put in your email address, and then everything should be smooth after that. I'll be back. Stay back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom Optimization capability. Nadex's unique short term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N A D E X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Dow's up 85. S&P's up 4.65. Now, this is going to be very important. Uh, uh, good question. A uh, statement, really. Uh, JPM said a few days ago trading in equity volume was, was weak in the summer. Oh, okay. Well, that kind of explains it. I don't know why it should have, you see. It shouldn't matter what the season is. Um, all right, well, that's that. Now, there are a couple of things that I need you to talk about. Within the context of where we are right now, if we are doing this whole rotational thing and each sector is going to all-time highs and they do get in the own time, remember, tops are made sequentially. Occasionally, you'll get them as a unified thing, but most of the time, you get tops that are sequential. Remember, 2000, it was January of, uh, for the Dow, and then it was the S&P and the semiconductor, the SOX index in March. Well, um, what we're looking at here is that the, the Dow just did it yesterday. And within that context, I've got to say, okay, now do I have to put in the context that the NYA can go to a new high. Well, even if it continues at this rate, 
it would take at least two, three weeks before it can get to the old high. So that's going to be a part of the component of what I'm looking at next week, number one. Number two, the TLT, I didn't take all that much time today to talk about it. The TLT just made a low of 116.19, double check that, yeah, that was a tad higher than the 116.09 arch formation left side of the H to M pattern from May. And it makes a rally here very important because if it succeeds in going above 117.92 to 118.45, all of next week, if it can rally, that's a big deal. But if it stalls and it comes back and does a retest, that would be like the dollar, almost the same chart. But look, hits the 200 period moving average exactly for two days. Beautiful turnaround to the upside. But it hasn't even taken out yesterday's ugly candle. A beautiful turnaround. But it'll be even more spectacular if by 4 o'clock, which it won't do. It goes above 94.56, or maybe by Sunday it could do that. But that's going to be really important. It must hold the 93, um, the 90, uh, it must hold the 90, yeah, 381 level, because that's going to be very important. Hey, folks, have a great weekend. See you on Monday. And remember, uh, you've got to type in your, your address. If you're a subscriber to my uh, opening call, then you should be all set to go. Um, have a great weekend. See you on Monday. Thank you. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank, and get the type of interest they receive. Instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan's most recent webinar, how price, volume, and time make market profile so unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This is TFNN, the Tiger Financial News Network. TFNN, headline news update.
Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNet headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida. It's Friday, 12 noon Eastern time, middle of the trading day, and we have the Dow reaching all new time highs today. Closing at all time highs yesterday, Dow up 102 points currently, trading 26,759. S&P is currently positive by three, trading at 29.43, and the NASDAQ in negative territory, negative by three points, trading at 8,024. Got some action in gold to the downside, off about $10, trading at at 1260 cents. Got some action in oil as well. We'll start things off. Let's jump over to the Nadex platform, take a look at some of those futures markets. We'll start off with the Dow 30. So quite an opening bell acceleration to the downside. Overnight, we're up there at about 26,812. We're looking at the December futures contract. Similar action coming into the opening bell, but we sell off about 100 points down to 26,720. And from there, we've been climbing almost back up to that level. Dow trading 26,790. 91. NASDAQ 100 sell off around the opening bell as well. Clawed back about half of those losses. NASDAQ 100 trading 76.02. S&P is right in the middle of its range as well, trading at 29.43. It's about three or four points higher early in the session. Crude oil with volatility in both directions. Early in the day, just prior to 11 a.m., we we're up there at 71.77, quite a number for crude. We're now down more than $1.20 from that level. Oil trading $70.53. Gold trading lower as well. We were up there at 12.15 overnight. Call it 3 a.m. Eastern time. From there, we sell off pretty dram dramatically, escalating at about 8.45 this morning. Tom and I were on the air. Quite a trade that got made selling a bunch of gold. And we've continued. Gold trading at $1,200 and Bitcoin trading $67.09. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman coming up right now with the Tiger Technicians Hour. And of course, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien all this afternoon. Have a great Friday, everybody. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.